I was on this news broadcast, mm -hmm. public affairs news broadcast. I had been on that program several times. When I went back to appear on the program one time, I was talking to the various uh, uh, workers at the program and the interns, because I know a lot of the people for many years. Mm -hmm. And one person I didn't recognize. So I said, and who are you? And the person looked very young. Mm -hmm. uh, probably how you looked when you were 21. Um, you look like you were young, look younger for your age. Um, and she said, I'm an intern here. So I said, you're an intern. You're an intern. You look young enough to be Michael Jackson's playmate. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I, I was making a silly joke. No. I was making, wait, wait. wait. I said, making a silly joke. Two days later, the producer of the program gives me a call. Do you remember what happened when you were here? I said, no, I don't remember anything happening. When you were here. Do you remember what happened when you were? No, I don't remember. Do you remember you had a conversation with one of my uh, staff? I said, I had a conversation with all of your staff. I was saying hello to everybody. Did you remember you had a conversation with an intern? I said, yeah. oh, yeah, I remember. So she says to me that this intern felt sexualized. I said, sexualized? I was talking about age. I never even thought about what I was saying in the context. No, I'm a playmate? Because Michael Jackson, <laughs> allow me, Brianna. Okay, okay. Michael Jackson liked little boys, prepubescent boys. She was an adult woman. It never occurred to me I was making a sexual remark. It never mm. occurred to me. Mm. Mm. I say that you're a lawyer, go hire a polygraph. Yeah, no, and I believe it on you. My wrist. I it never <laughs> occurred to me. Then yeah. this producer, who I've known for 30 years, mm -hmm. by the way, mm -hmm. I knew this producer before this producer was famous mm -hmm. through some con personal concatenations. She starts lecturing me, Norman. The days of white male privilege are over. Norman, in this dull monotone, like a party apparatchik, you know, like Ninochka, Gre Greta Garbo and Ninochka. Norman, the days of white privilege are over. White male privilege are over. I'm thinking to myself, my days of white male privilege are over. Are you aware? I've been unemployed the last 15 years. Mm. Are you aware I have been not only unemployed, but unemployable? Mm. Are you aware that the main reason I'm unemployed is because of something I said on your program? Mm. And now you're lecturing me about my privilege? You went to Harvard, so did Brianna. Your three siblings went to Harvard. Your father went to Harvard. And you're lecturing me about privilege? And where does the male thing come in? Are you saying to me, Finkelstein, Weinstein, Epstein? Is that the point you're trying to make to me? Now, she thought I was going to grovel and beg for forgiveness. It ain't going to happen. I don't like it, and I particularly don't like it when privileged white liberals are lecturing everybody else about their privilege, about the privilege of white workers. Oh, yeah, it's a real privilege to work in Amazon says the person in Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. No. So, I don't go for that. 
Sorry, you lose me. So this, this is and that's where I say I have a problem, not just with whether or not the professor should be forgiven, but whether the professor should have to ask for forgiveness.